In this program, we're going to use a while loop to find the maximum and minimum of a series of input values. In this program, we're going to input a sequence of positive real numbers, and we're going to determine which is the largest and which is the smallest. We're going to terminate the program by using a negative number. So any, no any negative number we input will be considered a sentinel, so that's why all of our good numbers are going to have to be positive real numbers. We have the numbers, uh, the variables declared. So we have number set to zero. The maximum value is initialized to zero. So is minimum, and so is sum, and so is average. So in addition to determining the maximum and the minimum, we're also, also going to get the average of the numbers when we're all finished. We have the code already. We're going to prompt the user to enter their first number. We have the uh, printf for the prompt. We have the scanf to read that number in using %f because it's real. And then we will write the number back to the output screen. Now, what we want to do is find the maximum and the minimum. We're going to use a while loop, so our initial inputs will be prior to the loop. And that's already implemented here with these three lines of code. In order to get going, we need to have a beginning value for the maximum and the minimum. So the technique I'm going to use for this is once we have the first number entered, I'm going to make the max equal to that number because we only have one. We also set the minimum equal to that number. Okay, because we only have one number, so it's both the max and it is the min. All right, uh, the sum has already been initialized to zero up here, so I don't need to worry about that. And the other things are already initialized as well, so we are good to go. All right, now, we have the first value input, so we need to enter our while loop, and we need to take care of processing it. So we want to do while, and the terminating condition will be number as being a negative value, that being a, a sentinel value for input. So as long as our number is greater than or equal to zero, then we want to continue to process values that are typed in. So the terminating condition is when the number goes negative, we will exit the loop. Inside the loop, we want to do several things. If we're going to compute the average, then we have to sum up the values as they come in. So we can do sum plus equals number. And if you haven't seen this notation before, that's exactly the same as writing sum equals sum plus number. So these, uh, these are, this is the assignment operator. And if you haven't seen it, then it's just a shorthand notation for writing out this longer uh, expression here. We also need to increment the counter. So counter began with 1. We have an input value. Our, our first one is in. So we also need to increment the counter. So counter, we can use the plus equals again here to add 1 to counter. And let's see what's wrong with that. It's called count, not counter. All right, so we have accumulated the sum. We've added 1 to our counter. Now we have to determine if we need to reset the values for maximum and minimum. All right, so we need an if statement for that. Okay, so if the number is greater than max, then we need to reset max. Okay, so max would be equal to the number, uh, semicolon, and we'll close the block of code for the if statement. Then we need to test to see if we need to reset the minimum. Okay, so if the newly acquired number is less than the min, then we reset min to number. All right, so it's a pretty simple way, simple technique to find the maximum and minimum of an input stream of values. All right, so this is the body of the while loop. And let's look at the things that it's doing. We have a number that's been entered. We have accumulated the sum, we've counted it, we've checked to see if the number is larger than max, if so, max becomes the number. 
and if the number is less than min, we reset min. We also have to have the next number input because we're going to input a series of numbers. After we have processed a given number, then we need to ask the user to type in another one. I don't need to type all that out because I have the prompt and the scanf already coded up here for the first input. So I can copy those three lines of code with control C and I can paste them into the loop here. And let's tab over to indent those like, like that. And let's take out the extra space here. All right, well, I don't want to take out that, so let's put the right paren and semicolon back in there. So now our loop is going to process a number. When we have processed the number, we will ask our user to type in another number. We'll read it. We'll print that back to the screen. And we'll go back up to the top. Now, as long as this number is bigger than zero, it's still a valid input. So we will accumulate the sum by adding it on. We'll count the new value and we'll test it to see if it's different than max or min. And then we will continue with the next input. So this goes on and on until the user types in a sentinel value, which would be a negative value, and that would terminate the loop. Let's look at what we have after the loop. I've already put this in because the point of this video is to show you how to use the while loop to find maximum and minimum. Outside the loop, we are going to print out the results. It's possible that the user might have chosen to enter a negative value either intentionally or accidentally the very first time, and if that happened, then count would be zero. We'd have no processing inside the loop, so this is just an error condition. So as long as we have a value, at least one, then we will compute the average. So we have the cum accumulated sum divided by the count. And since those are uh, the count is an integer type, I've used the float type um, cast operator to convert count to float temporarily. Then we just print out the smallest number min, largest number max, and the average. In the situation where count is zero, that's an error. So we'll print out this message, no numbers were entered, program terminating. All right, let's build the program and run it and get some values for maximum and min. The program is running. So now we have, and let's, let's get the code so we can see what's happening here. The first prompt is outside the loop. Oops, that's not what I want. Um, that's what I want. Okay, so enter a positive real number. That comes from the printf scanf outside the loop. So let's put in our first number. So let's, let's make this one 25. Okay, we echo that back to the screen. And now we have entered the loop. Now the first time through, we're actually doing some redundant stuff. We only have one number. But because of the way I need to structure the loop, I want to have the test for maximum and minimum up here. So the first time through, there will be no change to max, no change to min. And then we get the prompt to enter another value down here. So the second prompt that you see on the, in the output window is due to the printf at the very bottom of the loop. So now we're inside the loop and we can enter a series of numbers. So I'm going to put in 100. And let's remember these numbers as we go. Enter another positive real number. Alrighty, I want to put in the value 15. And we could make these fractions if we wanted to. Uh, let's put in a, a big number this time. Let's put in, uh, let's say, 125.5. Let's enter another number. So you see we are continuing to stay in the loop. As long as we input positive real numbers, our program continues to prompt us. So let's put in a number like 10.25. Enter, and let's just continue. I'll put in 59, and I'll put in 128. All right, so here's the sequence of numbers that we've input, and if you've been keeping up, then the largest number that I entered was the last one, 128, and the smallest number, I think, was uh, 10.25. So if our program is working correctly, it should remember the maximum value is 128, the minimum is 
All right, well, let's terminate the program by entering a negative value, so minus 1 will do. And when we do this, we'll exit the loop and we'll print out the results. All right, so we exited the loop, and our smallest number minimum is 10.25, the largest is 128, and the average is 66.107. So that information is output down here. And since we had several values, count was greater than or equal to 1, so this is the output that we got. Now, we can stop this, and let's run the case where the user might forget and just put in a, a negative value to begin with. So let's terminate this, and let's run the program again. This time, let's enter the value of some negative value at the very beginning. Okay, minus 1 again. And we will have no values this time. So this is just the sentinel to terminate the program, so we should get the error message at the bottom. And we do. Okay, count is equal to zero for that if statement. And we have no numbers were entered. The program is terminating, which we get at the very bottom as an error output, an error message. Also, in that case, number greater than zero was false the very first time, so we didn't go through this part of the loop at all. All right, so this is a program that will come in handy because this is the kind of thing we'll need to do quite often. We'll need to go through a sequence of input values and inspect them in some way. So this program uses the while loop to show you how to detect a maximum value and a minimum value. And that concludes this video.